Hi, my name is Bud Endress. I'm Director of Product Management to the OLAP option to the Oracle database. Thanks for tuning in to this video which will introduce using Microsoft Excel with Oracle 11 G cubes. This video will be divided into two parts. I'm going to start out with a short PowerPoint presentation which introduces the solution. I'm going to follow it by a very interesting demo that's going to take about 15 minutes. This slide advises you that this presentation makes no guarantee regarding future delivery of features or functionality. That said, this Oracle OLAP Excel solution is based on Oracle 11G, currently shipping product. So, why is this solution important? First, everyone has and knows how to use Excel. It's simply very easy for people to just get started. Excel has the ability to access data from external data sources, including OLAP cubes. It has very effective dimensional query and navigational capability using built-in pivot tables. It's also the gateway to other Microsoft Office applications such as PowerPoint and Word. For example, I can create a report and graph in Excel from an Oracle cube and paste it into a presentation. Oracle OLAP is an ideal data source to Excel. Being part of the Oracle database, it has the ability to efficiently store and analyze vast amounts of data. It offers exceptional query performance, which encourages users to actively explore data. Its rich dimensional calculation model supports a wide variety of key performance indicators. Finally, it's a very efficient aggregate management solution. Together, Oracle OLAP and Excel can be an important extension to your business intelligence solutions. Here is just one example of a report that can be easily created in Excel using data from in Oracle Database Cube. Note that all data is stored and accessed from the cube and all calculations are performed in the cube. In this report, sales is a stored measure of the cube and sales year-to-date, sales year-to-date prior year, and sales year-to-date percent change from prior year are being calculated dynamically in the cube. The cube is being presented in a dimensional context within an Excel pivot table. Note that we have a product dimension nested within a time dimension on rows that I can navigate to lower or higher level of details within the hierarchy. Excel also offers useful visualization tools such as bar charts within data cells and the arrows acting as trend indicators. This report is very easy to create in Excel. We'll make this report in the demonstration coming up shortly. Excel queries multidimensional data sources using a language known as MDX. MDX stands for multidimensional expressions. Using the MDX provider for Oracle OLAP, a product of Simba Technologies, Excel makes a native MDX connection to the Oracle Cube. Excel issues MDX queries to the MDX provider. The MDX provider parses these queries, generates SQL to the Oracle Cube, and performs any needed MDX transformations and returns data to Excel. From the point of view of Excel, it's just querying an OLAP data source using MDX. A few important points about the Simba MDX provider for Oracle OLAP. First, Excel is simply making a connection to an OLAP data source. Add-ins to Excel are not required. Users interact with OLAP query capabilities that are built into Excel. Any data in an Oracle 11 G cube can be queried from within Excel. So Excel is a data access option for all Oracle OLAP cubes. Finally, the installation of the MDX provider for Oracle OLAP occurs on the PC where Excel is run. It's a very quick and light installation, similar to that of an ODBC driver. The easiest way to appreciate this solution is to see it in action. This demonstration will analyze year-end sales for calendar year 2008 with the objective of finding departments, categories, and lower-level product dimension members that are underperforming as compared to the prior year. Let's get started. As we start the demo, we have a blank Excel worksheet. And my first task is make a connection to the database, so I'm going to choose an existing connection, and that's a connection to the DM sales cube. I'm going to choose to add a pivot table report to the worksheet, and I'll be prompted for my Oracle ID and password. The MDX provider is going to connect to the database, examine the data dictionary, and to the right we see a list of measures, and dimensions that can be used to construct the report. I'm going to start by adding sales, sales year to date, sales year to date prior year, and sales year to date percent change from prior year. 
I want to break the data out by time, so I'll drag the calendar hierarchy to the row label position. And I'll also break data out by product, so I'll grab the standard hierarchy and put that also on the row label position. I may be interested in choosing specific channels or geographies or breaking them out, so I'll put those in the report filter position. I'm going to be working on this report for a while, so it might be a good time to clean it up a bit. I'm going to turn off grid lines. I'm going to put a border around the report. And I'm going to set a few pivot table options. In this report, I don't need to see grand totals for rows or columns, and I'm not interested in marking certain values with an asterisk. And I'm also going to turn off properties and tooltips to make things a little bit cleaner as we move the mouse around the report. Since we're going to focus on the most recent full year, I'm going to keep only calendar year 2008 in the report, so I'll select it and choose to keep only selected items. So now we have only calendar year 2008. I'm going to add some conditional formatting, so I'll select the sales value and I'm going to add blue bars and I'm going to choose to apply those to all cells that have sales. And I'm going to repeat this process with sales year to date. And sales year to date prior year. For the sales year to date percent change measure, I'd like some indicators that indicate trends. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to choose icon sets, more rules, and I'm going to choose colored arrows. I'm going to apply this to all cells that have the percent change measure. And my rules will be, if a cell has a value of greater than 10 or growth greater than 10%, display the green arrow. If it's 0 to 10, yellow. And if it's below 0, display the red arrow. Now everything really looks just great. We have three red arrows here. But the question is, is is everything good across all time periods throughout the entire product hierarchy? I'm going to look deeper within time by drilling on calendar year 2008. And I can see now we have some products that aren't doing quite so well as it's broken out by time. I no longer need the calendar year 2008 label, so I'm going to hide that. While I have products nested within time, it's a little bit difficult to distinguish between the bars for time and product. So I'm going to set the time values to a different color. I'll set them green. That'll just make it a little bit easier to distinguish between the values. So I select each measure, choose a green bar chart, and choose to apply it to all cells for time periods. I can now easily see that we have some departments that didn't perform as well at the quarter level as they did at the year level. Since an, an acceptable value for an aggregate level dimension member doesn't always mean that all of the member's descendants also performed well, it would be useful to see if there are lower level products that are underperforming. Without some help, this can be a bit of a challenge because problems can be very deep within the hierarchy. To help me find lower level dimension members that are underperforming, I've defined a function in the cube that identifies when a higher level dimension member has descendants that meet certain conditions. In this case, I'm looking for lower level products that have both negative sales growth and significant revenue. My function looks for members that have a percent change in sales of less than zero and a share of sales greater than or equal to 2% of sales. That way I'm not looking for spending my time looking for sales fluctuations in products that have relatively little revenue. This is the product alert measure. 
the product alert measure returns values of negative 1 any time a descendant has sales that a percent change in sales that meet those conditions. The negative 1 isn't very attractive, so I'm going to change this to a stoplight. And what I'm going to do is choose to make this so that it displays a red stoplight any time there is a value of less than 0. Since I don't need to see the negative 1 in the report, I'm going to choose Show Icon Only. By scanning the stoplights, I can see that there are departments that have troubles deeper within the hierarchy. Since we're doing a year-end analysis, I'm going to focus on Q4. Within Q4, we have one department, Computers, that is experiencing problems deeper within the hierarchy. So I'm going to drill down on Computers to the category level to see what information I find there. Within Computers, I can see that Computer Printers and Supplies and Total Personal Computers are experiencing problems. I'm going to drill down on Total Personal Computers because it is the bigger of the two categories. And then I'm going to focus on Computer Storage because it's the largest category under Total Personal Computers that is also experiencing problems deeper within the hierarchy. But before I do so, I'm going to highlight cells to make it a bit easier to spot those values that are having problems. I'm going to choose to highlight cells that have percent change of sales less than zero, and I'm going to apply that to all values with the percent change measure. I'll drill down on computer storage. And here I can now easily see that the G5 power server with sales growth of negative 28% and significant revenue, almost half a million dollars, is experiencing some problems. So I'd like to see if I can understand some trends for this product. I'm going to choose to keep only this value by choosing the filter and keep only selected items. And next, I'm going to choose to remove higher level fields from this report so we can focus on this one product. So I'll choose Show High Fields, Remove Department. I'll remove Category. And I'll remove Product Type. This will leave me with the G5 Power Server in the report. I'm interested in seeing how this product performed over time. So I'll select Time, go back to the Row Filter, and I'm going to add a few years back to this report. To improve the layout of the report, first I'll switch the position of the Time and Product dimensions. But since we're really focusing only on this one product, I think I'll put this up in the row report filter position. I can now see that the product didn't do too well a number of years back, and it's not doing well recently by the percent change measure. I don't think I need the product alert any longer, so I'll remove that from the report. And I'm going to remove the year-to-date measures also. It's still a little bit difficult to spot trends, so I'm going to add a three-period moving average, which will smooth the sales values out a little bit over time, and see if that reveals anything. To make it easy to scan the data, I'm going to add conditional formatting to this measure also. The three-period moving average measure makes it pretty clear that there was a trend where sales peaked in the latter half of calendar year 2006 and began declining in mid-2007. I think I'll focus on the three-period moving average, so I no longer need sales, and I'll remove that from the report. I might be interested in seeing if there's trends by region, so I'm going to move the region hierarchy to the column labels filter 
and break the three period moving average out by region. To make it a bit easier to view data, I'm going to set the column width equally across each of the regions to make the bar charts a bit more meaningful. I can now see that the sales trends were really driven by sales in Asia. These findings will certainly be interesting to regional managers and the product manager, so I'm going to create a chart that I can share in a PowerPoint presentation. I'll first create the chart in the Excel workbook. Then I can simply select the chart, copy it, and paste it into PowerPoint. Now remember, the Excel workbook has a live connection to the Oracle Cube, and this PowerPoint is currently linked to the Excel worksheet. So change that I make in the Excel worksheet show up in this PowerPoint presentation, changes that I would make in the cube would show up in the worksheet and also the PowerPoint presentation. So information can flow from the cube into Excel and to other MS Office applications. And we'll illustrate this by going back to Excel. We'll illustrate this by going back to Excel, choosing Asia, and using the filter command to keep only that value. We can now see the chart in Excel has changed, and as we go back to the presentation, we'll see that the presentation's chart also changes to focus on Asia. Finally, I'll point out that it's very easy to share these documents simply by saving them and distributing them to colleagues. For example, I could save this Excel workbook email the workbook to a colleague, and so long as they have the MDX provider and access to the Oracle Cube, they can open this up and have a live connection to the Oracle database in the Oracle Cube and explore data further on their own. Now you have a pretty good idea of how Excel and Oracle Cubes can work together to improve your BI solutions. Listen in for a few more minutes to learn how you can get more information on this solution. Thank you for spending the time to learn about this terrific Excel Oracle OLAP business intelligence solution. For more information about Oracle OLAP, visit oracle.com, the Oracle Technology Network, and the Oracle Product Discussion Forum. To learn more about the MDX provider for Oracle OLAP, visit www.simba.com and look for the product announcement, the MDX provider product details, and the MDX provider frequently asked questions document. Have a great day.